All right, joining me now is Mehmet Chilik here in Istanbul. He is the editorial coordinator at Daily Sabah. Mehmet, welcome. Khan, King of Kings, quite the name for Turkey's first fifth generation aircraft. Khan is the King of Kings, uh, as it is uh, known in, in Turkish language. It's, it's a very historic name. And indeed, this is a historic moment for Turkish defense industry and Turkish Republic uh, at large, because Turkey in the past 20 years has grown hugely when it comes to defense industry from merely 20% domestic production. Now that uh, dependency has minimized to about 20%. So previously there was about 80% uh, dependence on defense industry, external defense, uh, uh, dependence. Now that has been minimized to about 20%. And Khan, I think it's a huge threshold for this uh, growth that Turkish defense industry is experiencing in the past two decades. Indeed, it will add to Turkey's military muscle, deterrence mm. capability, but also I think it has a huge political influence when it comes to its buying, purchasing power, when it comes to political negotiations. Very recently, we had the F-16 issue with the United States, for example, mm -hmm. um, and now with the Khan, uh, uh, and if it, adds to, if it is added to the inventory, I think it will be a huge game changer as Turkey will be able to phase out the F-16s from its inventory and replace it by right. something that's domestically uh, grown. So geopolitics here is obviously a key factor in the decision to make a homegrown fifth generation fighter jet. What really, from your view, is the main driving force for to Turkey to become so self-reliant when it comes to its defense industry? Well, uh, we know Turkey had uh, very difficult times when it comes to uh, protecting its borders when it was depending on external defense uh, products, be it drones, be it very recently we had the same issue with F-16s uh, or other defense mechanism. Turkey is in a very fragile neighborhood. We have two failed states in our southern border with Syria and Iraq, uh, uh, and there's a huge counterterrorism uh, 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 operation that Turkey has been fighting, PKK for example, for the past uh, 40 years. Now, we saw this change with the drones and their effect with the Bayraktar drones, for example. Uh, in, in Libya, we've seen them in, in, the, in Ukraine, in South Caucasus, in, in, in Azerbaijan, uh, and we've seen them in Syria. When the drones were actually introduced to the field, there was a huge game-changing effect that followed. With Khan, I think it will be the full show uh, added to, uh, you know, already... Uh, that show that we have been seeing with the drones, with Khan, I think that will be elevated to a new level. So we saw recently, of course, uh, the Turkish defense industry has said that they're going to start building the engines, which is a major step for these jet aircraft in the next two to three years. Do you think that the recent problems with the F-16 delivery delay by the U.S. Congress that was finally passed after over a year of negotiations, the the politics around the F-35 deal. We saw Canada briefly halt, <clears throat> halt key components for Turkey's combat drones. Do you think all of that played a role in Turkey's decision-making to move forward in, in its indigenous military defense hardware production? You know, there is that saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I think that, that, you know, that drive has elevated, like you said, the, Turkish, the boost in Turkish defense industry. Very recently, this week, uh, uh, an official said, we are ready to sell those optics to Canada, which Canada at one point embargoed Turkey for political reasons. Now we are able to sell them that product that we were trying to get from them and we weren't able to due to political disagreements on other issues. So the, the politicization of defense cooperation, I think, has a huge effect on Turkey being now reliant on its own domestic production and that will also you know, boost Turkey's political influence, not only in its region, but it, it, it is becoming a global player uh, in international affairs, not just for deterrence, but also for peacemaking, for mediation. As we have seen in Ukraine, Turkey's role when it comes to uh, diplomatic mediation, now in, 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 with Gaza situation, Turkey is playing that role. In Libya, with recent normalization efforts, I think it will be a big effect in, in Horn of Africa. So Turkey is is, is uh, growth in political muscle is actually 
uh, being supported by that military muscle at the right. same time. So they are simultaneously supporting one another. And of course, I think the economics is a huge part of this as well. Mm -hmm. That will be you know, an additional uh, sector for, that will strengthen Turkish economy as well. Now, we've seen other countries already expressing interest in the Khan, well before the Khan is even fully operational. Ukraine, Pakistan, Azerbaijan is even uh, reportedly going to become part of the production line. Do you see this as putting Turkey in a major driving role in the region as a power broker, even shifting the balance of power in, from the Black Sea to the Mediterranean to North Africa, given the elite club that this puts Turkey in? Yeah, currently the fifth generation aircrafts are produced by only a very few countries. And Turkey is going to be one of them, I think the fourth or the fifth one uh, worldwide. So that power will move Turkey's middle power st status, which cur currently Turkey is in, to somewhere between middle power and superpower. It, indeed, Turkey is not a superpower at the moment. But it has a very key role that it plays in international affairs, that it moves its that very traditional middle power sense to something that is more elevated due to its prestigious uh, uh, moves in defense industry, in diplomatic mediation, even in uh, uh, development cooperation that it has uh, facilitated in, in, in African region, for example. So there is that prestige effect that Turkey is now employing and equipping itself with that it will move to the big guys' uh, league. Mehmet Celik, always a pleasure.